Hello and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 87. This is a sagittal T2 fat sat MRI image through the knee. And the high yield question is, which structure or structures are likely to be injured? Is it the ACL, the PCL, the MCL and lateral meniscus, or the ACL and PCL? If you notice on the image, there's bone marrow edema involving predominantly the anterior femoral condyle and the anterior tibial plateau. This should suggest a hyperextension injury mechanism. Now notice that you can't see the ACL, the PCL, the MCL, the lateral meniscus, or any of the structures that are involved in the question, but you should be able to infer that based on this bone marrow contusion pattern, that this is a hyperextension injury and both the ACL and the PCL are gonna be injured. So that's the answer here. So when you have microtrabecular contusions or bone bruises along the anterior femur, anterior proximal tibia, it indicates that the ACL and the PCL are injured. Now, this is a hyperextension injury. This is one of five classic contusion or bone marrow edema patterns in the knee. The key here is that the bone marrow edema patterns always predict the soft tissue structure that's injured. In the case of a hyperextension injury, you typically get a direct force applied to the proximal tibia, or this can occur from sports injuries like soccer from forceful kicking. So that's typically when we see hyperextension injuries. And typically you'll get kissing contusions between the anterior tibia and the anterior femur. Notice that there's no discrete hypointense fracture line, but these are bone bruises. These are microtrabecular contusions, kind of like fractures without a fracture line. When you see marrow edema in these two characteristic locations, you should always infer that both the cruciate ligaments, the anterior cruciate ligament and the posterior cruciate ligament are injured. And you can see in this MRI that there is abnormality of the ACL. This is the anterior cruciate ligament. It's very thick. It's indistinct. There's at least a sprain or a partial tear here. And here along the PCL, there's a frank tear distally. Notice that we lose the dark contour of the ligament. Remember, ligaments are always dark on all MRI sequences. And, you know, we lose the contour of this curvy linear ligament more distally before it attaches to the tibia. So there's definitely a frank PCL tear here and at least a sprain and a partial tear of the ACL on this image. I think it's worth reviewing the five classic contusion patterns in the knee because they're so common. And when you see the bone marrow edema patterns, it should always alert you to look for the soft tissue structures that are injured. So in acute patellar dislocation relocation, we typically have marrow edema along the anterior lateral femoral condyle, the inferior medial patella, and of course, the medial retinaculum is injured. In a pivot shift injury mechanism, which is common in football and skiing, we get microtrabecular contusions or edema along the anterior lateral femoral condyle and the posterior lateral tibial plateau. And of course, the ACL is injured. In a hyperextension injury, like you saw in this index case, you typically get marrow edema along the anterior femoral condyle and the anterior tibial plateau. And of course, both cruciate ligaments are injured in that case. In a dashboard injury, like when your knee hits the dashboard of a car, you typically get a contusion along the anterior proximal tibia and the PCL is injured in isolation. And a clip injury typically occurs when you get bone marrow edema along the femoral condyles, both the medial and lateral femoral condyle. And in that case, the soft tissue structure that's injured is the ACL and the MCL or the medial collateral ligament. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.